All right. These fine folks are at the Kino Electric Sports Complex during the Tushan show where I vend. And I love the prices. Like between 5, 10, 15, 20, sometimes 30 or 40 dollars a piece. But I really enjoy buying the five dollar pieces from these folks during the Tucson show. They're super kind folks. They are inside of the main tent during Kino, uh, near Sunless Silver, and where the Uper Light guy is. All of these I'm about to show are only five dollars each. I couldn't cut most of these for five bucks. It would be impossible. Some super nice Chrysocola. Some nice Azurite and Malachite. There are some smaller pieces in here for five bucks, but they are definitely a higher quality. Some cute blue lace. So I don't just buy from these folks the material that I don't enjoy cutting, but also because they make really great shapes sometimes. Like their teardrops and such. And it's just too good of a deal to pass up. I'll work it in silver, or I'll drill a hole and braid it up. I don't really resell the cabs I buy from them without working them one way or another. These are some cool Moroccan septarian cabajons. You don't see too many septarian cabs, I think. This is a cool piece with lots of green. Again, all of these are five bucks. Some snowflake obsidian. Some charite. Back in the day, you would not find this material for five dollars in almost any quality. Very nice stuff. Some people might say this is a lower quality charite, but where I live in Taos, New Mexico, you or even Santa Fe, Albuquerque, you would find this inside of silver or gold for so much more than five dollars. These guys are great price, and you you won't find too much charite this price. Some crazy lace. I don't know what this is. I don't know if it would be considered a dendritic agate or whatnot. I really don't know. Maybe a plume agate. Some very nice malachite cabs. A lot of other cabs that I see of malachite for around this price are not half of this quality. During the Tucson show, Wormtown, uh, a vendor named Wormtown near the hotel strip sells malachite cabs and they are nowhere close to this quality even though they're around the same price here's some nice chrysocola cabajons i don't know if this is considered shatakite or the shatakite i don't even know that name you know what i'm talking about <laughs> bumblebee jasper definitely one of the materials i prefer to buy from these folks than to cut myself because of how nasty it is a lot of arsenic inside of this material. And for five dollars, you cannot beat it. If you took this to a store and sold it, you can expect 40, maybe 50 dollars each for pieces this size and this style of designer cap. Some nice agates. I don't know if this would be considered the Montana agate, but it's super nice. Some beautiful K2, I believe it's from Pakistan, I'm not exactly sure. Azurite berries inside of the marble. Or maybe it's granite. Oh my gosh. It's a good sign right there. It's mandatory that masks are properly worn. Malachite. All and maybe some iron in there? Here are some things copper? that you can do to help us all stay safe during this pandemic. Number one, stay home if you are sick. Number two, wash your hands. Number three, cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. Number
number four, social distancing means six feet between you and your neighbor. The city of Denver also requires Some nice that all food and drink are from Australia. in designated areas. I think that's how you pronounce and it. Masks are properly worn and are required of all attendees and vendors. Thanks. I used to call this material mukanite, which is not the way you pronounce it. I do believe it's called mukite or mukite. Oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Some more of that shatakite, I think is the way you pronounce it. Very nice for five dollars. Do you have a card, my friend? Some more of the material here. Some great designer cuts. Oh, thank you, brother. Do you think, is the K2 from Pakistan or yeah. Afghanistan? Oh, it's Pakistan? Pakistan. Here's the card. Feel free to give him a call. Let him know what you want. Or if you're at the Kino Electric Sports Complex during the Tucson show, pay him a visit. Go to Crusade for five bucks. It's gonna be very hard to beat that price. What a fantastic deal. Uh, I don't know, is that considered mouse agate? Beats me. Labradorites. Labradorite, even though it's not a toxic material compared to other stones, it's definitely one of the materials I prefer to buy instead of cutting because I do not like to chase the flash. Check these out. So this material is not particularly expensive, but these are such large cuts that for five bucks, it would just take so much time on the wheels to make this material, to make this style of cab, that it's just much easier to buy here from these gentlemen for five bucks. This material is super hard to cut. I imagine they're using silicon carbide and not diamond. Laramar for five dollars a cab. Not bad at all. I like this one. Doesn't have too much matrix. A friend of mine in Taos, New Mexico bought a piece of Laramar about that big inside of a simple silver setting and she paid over three hundred dollars for it. Laramar is one of those materials that people don't really know that it is a lot more affordable than what it's being sold for. These are cool. Natural Druzy Cabajons. A lot of Druzy Cabajons you see are kind of plated in titanium or something. And it's a real shame. I really love the, the natural ones that are not plated. Some chrysoprase spoke to the gentleman who works here earlier he does believe that it is Australian very cool is this what they call kumbaba super cool alright so that's the gist of the $5 pieces. Let's go take a look at some of the $10 pieces. Where does the... Um... Lime is darker than that color. That is key. <laughs> I'll be right back. What is this one? All right, so we're gonna take a look at some of the $10 pieces real quick so that we don't jock the table and scare people away with the camera. Just some nicer and larger pieces of lemon. Some more of the Moroccan sectarian. All 10 bucks. Some nice dark color rose quartz cabs for 10. Some cool agate slices. You can see the saw marks here are polished. Very weird. I wonder if it's tumbled. I don't know how they would be able to polish the saw marks like that. But it's very cool and tells a bit of a story on how the material was cut. Here's a super cool piece for $10. It has some natural druzies inside. 
and lots of saw marks on the back. The gentleman says he believes that this is serpentine. I'm definitely going to have to buy this piece here. Maybe some of the larger ones. For 10 bucks, it's not a bad deal. I can fashion this into a necklace and get, oh, maybe closer to $75, $80. Some blue lace. Very nice figuring. Some more Labradorite with blue flash. Love the blue. Some of the backs are not completely flat, but ever so slightly domed. If you were a silversmith and lapidary, you're more than likely able to flatten things out or stack the back with like sawdust or something if the back isn't completely flat. Here is some dendritic agates, $10 each. Some more of the Shattuckites, definitely some nicer colors and some nicer polishes on this material compared to the $5 materials. Some beautiful Prenite from South Africa. I used to think that it was tourmaline that was inside of this material, but then I found out that it's Epido. Some of these have polished saw marks on the back. Most Americans don't use a open back setting in their silver, so that would probably get covered up anyway. I actually leave a lot of my cabs, the backs of them, like a satin finish. Some more chrysoprase for $10. Definitely looks Australian. At first, when I was looking at the $5 pieces, I thought maybe it was from Zimbabwe. But, uh, yeah, this looks like the apple green from Australia. Some of the nicest Shattuckite we've seen at this table so far. These are stunning. Some nice super high domes. You could buy this, sell it for what it's casually being sold by the gram. And probably triple, quadruple your money. Just from reselling these nice cabs. Some more rhodochrosite, kind of a salmon looking pink. Looks like they're taken to about 600 grit before they're polished. They're undercut a little bit, which I kind of like, gives the stone some texture. This is such a soft material that at 600 grit, uh, you still get a great polish with using whatever kind of polishing compounds you finish this material off with. That's a nice one. Some more charite. Some super rich purples. Definitely a much higher quality than the $5 side. You can make this into a nice silver cuff. Get at least $300 for it. Very, very nice. Some more of the bumblebee. Indonesia. My favorite are the pieces that show off all the different color schemes. Some people prefer a lot of the yellow and oranges, but I like it when it has the whole variety of the material. Some more of the same stuff we've seen over there. So this agate, is it treated with sugar? I don't know. It is pretty black though. And some palm root over here. What is your favorite material to work with? Well, I, I, I'm partial to the agates and the jasper, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. Are you a silversmith? No. I'm, 
Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you turn them into jewelry or are you just a collector? I'm just a collector. Hey, that's really nice. <laughs> They're not going to get any cheaper, ever. Oh, no, I know it. <laughs> They're only going to go up and up and up and up and up. Those were the $10 pieces. Some more $5 pieces. Some beautiful Peruvian pinks. Love this opal. I wonder if there's ever any fire inside of this stuff. I've never seen any. I've never heard any of that had fire. But the blue Peruvian opal I've definitely seen have a little bit of fire inside. Some, I think this is called bronzite. I've never worked with it. I've never cut it before. But I really like it. Looks natural. This is five dollars. The ten dollar table ends right here. And before we leave these fine folks, we'll take a look at the two dollar cabs. There is no way I could ever cut any of these for two dollars. Making these such an amazing deal. A lot of these two dollar pieces will have a lot more of a earth tone. Not so much color amongst all of these pieces. But for two bucks, I couldn't begin to preform this material for any of these. Check this out. This must be some of the lowest quality um, blue lace. But it almost looks like quartz. Less agate and more quartz. I think that's super cool. I've never seen blue lace agate like that before. So folks, when you're checking out cabs that you don't own, never just throw them back in the tray. All over this tray, you can see broken cabs from where people disrespect the stones by just throwing them back into the tray. When they hit each other, they break. And it's such a shame. If I ever broke one like that, I would definitely buy it. Whoever did this might have not have noticed or might have not have cared. But show some respect when you're checking out other people's work. Well, even if I did buy it, I could easily do many things to fix this. Put a piece of gold or silver down the middle of it, flat lap the two sides, make a nice high quality cab out of this broken piece. Show some respect. Don't just throw the stones back in the tray. During the two stone show, I saw a gentleman just throwing the stones back into the trays where he got them from because he said that he liked the way they sound when they hit together. And that was just wrong. <laughs> Super rude. Perhaps he didn't know that they were really prone to being broken by throwing them back into itself, but it's kind of common sense. Anyway, rant over. Some bloodstone. The first cab that I ever made was a piece of bloodstone that my grandfather bought and made into a ring in the shape of a foot. I think he's Pisces or something and that has something to do with feet. And he still has it to this day. He was selling it for a while, took it to shows they never sold. And so he just kept it. This material I think is called Malangro, Malango. I see a lot of this stuff being sold by Indonesian wholesalers. $2 each, not bad at all. On social media such as Instagram or Facebook, I see these going for a lot more than $2 each. These gentlemen probably buy thousands at a time. So they get them at ridiculously great prices and they pass the savings on to you. And for $2 each, Definitely can't complain. Here's probably some super low quality bumblebee. A lot darker colors, some browns in there. But definitely cool, probably got a lot of the medicine that the higher quality pieces do. I don't know what this is. The nice big pieces for two bucks. Mahogany obsidian. My grandmother wants me to make a mirror for her out of this material, but most of the pieces of this material are not translucent. 
and she wants a translucent mirror. For two dollars each, this is a great deal for how large these are. Might have to buy a piece. That's just too good of a deal. Definitely gonna have to pick up some of that obsidian. Obsidian is some of the material that I really don't enjoy cutting because of how hard it is. So I definitely don't mind buying it from people who already have it cut. Some beautiful Afghanistan lapis. Some great quality for $2. I could not cut those for $2. I've cut pieces about the size and have gotten $25, $30 for it. When I set it in a ring, it could easily get over 100 bucks. I don't know what this is. Maybe it's moss agate? Is this rainforest jasper? I really don't know. Hey, is it poppy violet? I don't know. Feels really hard though. Oh, check these out. They're like satin finished. Similar cuts to the way you would see the druzies. But they use the natural cleavage for the texture on the top of the cap. They got nice flash. They do feel coated in some kind of mineral oil. Maybe they dry out and won't be as dark as if they weren't coated. But for two bucks, that's something really cool and kind of unique. I don't think I've ever seen this style of wood in a satin finish with the Your cleavage on top. Tanya Valiente, please come to the show office in the event Some nice chevron amethyst, Tanya perhaps Valiente, from Africa or from China. <laughs> I really like the spot right here for the natural earth. And they were cabbing it since it's a little bit lower than the top of this dome. It was probably really easy not to hit the spot right there. Very cool. Pretty unique.